A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. I lost the thing that lets me attach my phone to my t-shirt so I have to make use of the household products that I have at hand um, such that I look goofy as always I'm a goofy bastard so this really fits my style here on YouTube oh that is, me oh, that is looking is it just me or is it looking kind of fake it really doesn't hold properly. Never mind. Um, today is something cool. Try it out for yourself from the underground math, whatever that is. Someone shared it on Twitter. I took a screenshot and went on with life up until this point. We have to solve for all x out of the real numbers. A polynomial of the second degree raised to the power of the polynomial of the second degree is equal to 1. And I think this is going to make for a great video. This is why I put it into the video. I haven't solved it for myself yet. It's an improvised session. So you and me can try it out for ourselves the first time around. I think this is going to be a great question. Looking kind of fake, to be honest. So yeah, give it a shot. And if you're not yet familiar with calculus, exponents, and all this crazy stuff, why not make sure to check out the content of today's sponsor, Brian. More information at the end of the video, but up until now, if you want to get into calculus and the stuff, try out their courses, links down in the description. And now we are going to dive right in. So the first thing that actually came to my mind was pretty uh, limit-like. I'm living at the limit as always. I thought of the limit as, let's say this thing right here, the base is called F, and this thing right here is called G. When both approach zero from the right, um, in the limit, this could make it equal to 1. So this right here is one of the cases that we could have. Namely that f and g go to 0 plus. I don't know if this is one of the cases but or one of the possible things that could happen, but we are going to try it out. Other than that, um, this right here is a f to the g situation. Okay, equal to 1. Um, if we were to take logarithm, for example, the natural log on both sides, we are going to get that g times the natural log of f is equal to 1. No, log of 1 is 0. Now, a product is 0 if and only if one of the parts is equal to 0 in the multiplication, meaning either g can be equal to 0 and log of f can be equal to something else. Okay, this could just be something completely arbitrary. So case number 2 is if g is equal to 0 and f is something. <laughs> um, then this right here works. F actually must be positive. No, no, really doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter. So something to the zero of power is one. So this works out. Um, but this right here is not the limiting case. So what we need is um, F not equal to zero. Um, this is the only thing that we need, I suppose. And the other case is if G is something, okay, uh, that is very mathematical, G is just something, and log of F is equal to zero. And log of F being equal to zero just means um, F is equal to one. This is the third case, and I think those are all the cases. I don't believe that there are any other ones. Log of F, so... I mean, one other thing that could B, if we take a look at the real numbers, meaning we got the absolute value. Yeah, normally if we are just in the reals, we get the absolute value of the logarithm. Um, the negative one would also be possible, right? I mean, we got negative one as the base and thus the power must be even. That's another restriction we can impose on this whole thing. So this is actually another case. We're going to see if this works out. So f is equal to negative one and g is even. And with those cases out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. Get to the chopper now. Let us go ahead and get started with the second case. And the first case at last. The good stuff for the last part. Um, okay, I think we can fit everything here. 
most of that. So g is equal to zero, meaning we are going to find the zeros of this polynomial x squared minus 11x plus 30 is equal to zero, or in other words, using the quadratic formula, x one and two is equal to 11 over two plus or minus the square root of, and I'm going to get complaints from all of the American guys. Ugh, I'm obese and what the fuck is <laughs> this quadratic formula? I'm obese. <laughs> it's so good, it's so good. Uh, yeah, free, free hamburgers is a great unit of length. Um, okay, so we get 11 squared is 121 over four and then minus 30. Expanding 30 by 4 over 4 is going to give us 120 over 4. So this is just 1 over 4 and the square root of that is 1 half. So this is 11 over 2 plus or minus 1 half. Meaning overall we are going to get two solutions x1 and 2 being equal to um, on the one hand 6. No, first solution is 6 or g can be equal to 0 for the second solution 5. Now, what about f then in this case? Um, if this is equal to zero, we are going to get x squared minus seven x plus 11 is equal to zero, meaning x one and two are um, seven over two plus or minus the square root of 49 over four minus 11, expanding 11 by four over four. is going to give us 44 over four giving us square root of five over two, seven over two plus or minus the square root of five over two. Oh, huh. I mean, this is curious. Here we got nice integer values and for a math competition or something of that sort, it's fine. But suddenly we get square root of five. That's curious. Um, G is, no, no, G is equal. Oh, really doesn't even matter to us um, at this point. This right here is the first case and it doesn't work out. That was by accident. Um, we want f and g to approach zero plus, but this doesn't work out because those do not work out. Okay, so if we have six as the value for x, if we plug it into here, then f is not going to be equal to zero. Or if we have five in here, everything, we don't have f being equal to zero. So this doesn't work out. They can simultaneously go to zero plus. So this first case doesn't work out. Nah, 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 nah doesn't work out. Um, yeah, I was being a bit confused at this point, but we don't even need to look at that apart from the first case. So we got that out of the way by accident. But what about the second case? So g is equal to zero if it's six and five, and f is non-zero, which is obviously the case because f is only zero if it's seven over two plus or minus the square root of five over two. So this actually does work out for x being equal to six or x being equal to five. Now, f being equal to one. So that means we put f to be equal to one. We can put this in here. Let's just um, rearrange this equation, meaning subtracting one, we are going to get 10 here instead. So instead of 11, we get 10, meaning we get a 40 here. And this does make more sense because now we get nine divided by four, the square root of that is three divided by two. And this is looking way better. So for the second case, we are going to get x1 is equal to 10 over two is five, or x2 is equal to four over two, two. So f is equal to one, is only the case if x is equal to five or if x is equal to two. And g can just be something because it can just be something, okay, by exponentiation. So this right here is for the second case. This was the first one and this was the second one. Yeah, that is cool. And now the last one, f is equal to negative one, meaning we got 11 here negative one here, meaning we get 12 in the process. Now 12, um, 12 times four is 48. Oh, this is so cool, like, like seriously. 
Find a polynomial which satisfies something like this, that you get square roots nicely in two different cases. That is amazing. That is such a greatly awesomely, seriously greatly constructed question. That is seriously cool. So we get one half this time around, meaning we get x1 is equal to, that makes 8 over 2, so 4, or x2 is equal to 3. Now, this time g actually imposes another restriction on the whole problem. So this right here is the solution if f is equal to negative 1, but is g even if we plug one of the two values in? This is the only case we still need to consider. So if we plug 4 into here, we are going to get 16 minus 44 plus 30. This is the addition or subtraction, never mind, of even things. So this right here is even. So this right here checks out. And x is equal to 2. Um, then we are going to get nan minus 33, which is going to be even plus 30, which is also even. Hey, that is cool. So our problem works out for x squared minus 7x plus 11 raised to the power of x squared minus 11x plus 30 is equal to 1. For those numbers, x is equal to 5, 2, 3, and 4, and 6. Well, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Find polynomials like this. They are even in arithmetic progression. That is seriously great. Wow. What a cool question. And I think we got done with all of them. Um, I call Q E fucking D. That was seriously great. I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today here. And if you're interested in more calculus and crazy problems like this, then as mentioned at the beginning of the video, why not make sure to check out the contents of today's sponsor Brian? We kind of have to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Boop, 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 boop. Now, speaking of calculus, Brian actually goes really strong when it comes to this topic of mathematics. If you're not familiar with the website yet or the platform, it's your source for some of the best online learning content out there on the internet. Nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer sciences, you name it, in the STEM field, it's there. Brian definitely got something up their sleeve for you. And as mentioned before, interactive courses, you're going to be able to play around with graphics, very parameters. If you want to take a look at, for example, the derivative and what it means for an extremal point, for example, for, for a high point of a function to be in connection with the derivative. You're going to wiggle the graph around, a tangent at a curve, and you're going to notice that, hey, I reached the maximum, all right. The slope of the tension is equal to zero. That is very magical. That is very interactive and very intuitively done. And it's like that all over the place on Brian, be it in their daily mathematics section or maybe in their geometry section. Brian is just one of the best sources to learn something new every day. And I even use Brian in my own classes. I'm teaching German students, sixth grade, for example. We are doing geometry there, but they still understand the English because they don't need to know English for them to understand the visualizations that we have over on Brian. Geometry section, very around the corners of a triangle, and they are encoded by colors. And you're going to see very graphically that Basically, all the colors add up to 180 degrees no matter what. And this is just a playful way to prove the sum of interior angles. And I got this all over the place. And you should most definitely check it out if you still want to brush up on some old topics or maybe learn something new every day. Then Brilliant is definitely the perfect source for you. And you can already check it out for completely free, at least a big portion of it, by using my link down there at the top of the description, Brilliant.org slash maths. With it, you're going to also get 20% of an annual premium subscription if you seriously make use of the link. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel as well. And this concludes today's video and I hope you did enjoy the video as much as I did. The problem was really cool. I really like it. I really like such mathematics problems. I have no idea how people come up with stuff like this. Seriously, find a polynomial that acts like this and then exponentiate it. It's, it's seriously crazy. That was cool. And I hope you got the solution too. And don't forget to also check out Flimmy's Wood, my second channel for woodworking. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. See ya.